October 10th, year 2000. And the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Okay, um, moving through the agenda adjustments to the agenda. Um, I know there's just um, a couple of things. We're going to actually be looking at the um, item number three, approval of the September school board um, minutes. Hard to believe that it's October already, but we're looking back at September. Um, and we are going to have this evening comments by both the high school representatives as well as the middle school representatives. Um, are there other items? or ch adjustments that need to be made. I think we're all set. Um, then we would look at approval of those um, September school board minutes. Were there any uh, corrections that needed to be made to those? They're included in your packet. Um, seeing none, I'm gonna move on and invite our high school uh, representatives, uh, Sarah and Kirsten, to uh, tell us what's going on at the high school. our first in-school SAC meeting and we kind of went over some major things we want to focus on during the year and in terms of atmosphere we want to work to increase respect between the students and the faculty we also want to work to increase school unity through things such as a spirit week like they have in the middle school and there's never really been one set up in the high school we also want to have more dances um, we, want to have theme dances as well as dances with other schools. So we'd have kind of like a combined dance with maybe Yarmouth or Greeley just to get more kids involved and make it more fun. And we are also having a dance November 17th, which is being put on by um, the Parents Association. And it's going to be um, set up by student DJs. So that should be fun. And we also want to work on civil rights education um, as well as opening links between the SAC and the general student body. Um, another thing we want to work on this year is assemblies, and we want to have more of them. We haven't had many in the past, and we think it's just a good way to bring the schools to hold together. And we're working on getting a hypnotist or a magician, um, and as well as other student-centered assemblies, um, maybe a talent show or student perfor performances, as well as lectures and guest speakers. We also want to have a pudding or ice cream party as well as more frequent class meetings. And then in terms of community service, we want to really work in this area because we always talk about it and nothing really um, gets done about it many years. So we want to try and go to the soup kitchen as well as visit the Viking and do things with Habitat for human Humanity um, as well as do, there's an orga organization called YES, which is, stands for Youth Engaged in Service and we want to try and be a part of that. And we also want to do beach and trail cleanups and work on donations such as food, money, and clothing. Um, as far as school policies and curriculums are concerned, we want to get some new electives in the high school. Um, people have been talking about scheduling problems, trying to get the electives that they want like through the years of high school. Um, they want new classes offered because they feel that by the time they're senior, then they've done all the things that they want to do or haven't been able to do some of the things they want to do. So they want to try to get more technology um, electives or like a creative writing class or a home ec class, things that we haven't had before. But we're trying to look in to see if we would need like new facilities and new teachers to run those kind of programs. So we don't really know where that's going yet. Um, they want to have multi-level electives too to go with that. Um, the, the school policy with the current lateness in school, they want to do something to change that. To make, we want to make it like more lenient and see if we can work with that so it's not so like strict. Um, we want to work with, on communication between the teachers um, to figure out like so students don't have like too many tests or projects due in a day so that that can really help them like focus on the project or the test that they're doing so they don't get overwhelmed or stressed out by having multiple things due that day. Um, 
they want, uh, for fundraisers, we want to host dances and socials for the middle school, uh, have a car wash and bake sale and just basic things like that, and also maybe have a spring homecoming if that could be arranged somehow. Um, the fall sports at our high school are coming to a close, and uh, the playoffs are soon for most of the sports, so that's exciting. Um, I just have one last thing. Um, in terms of the senior privilege, um, just in the past week or two, a um, review board has set, been set up just to kind of review cases and issues where people are late, just someone who they can speak to and go through things in case there's some misunderstanding or something like that. And there's currently four students and two teachers on that board. I think that's about it for tonight. Right. Any yeah. questions? That was a lot of... A lot of things to cover. Um, do you, anyone have any comments or questions? Kevin. I had the opportunity to attend your SAC meeting uh, last Thursday, and you certainly have a very aggressive agenda, and, but you've got a, a pretty lively crew there. Uh, I congratulate you on your efforts uh, and wish you success, and let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Thank you. Thanks. There were just a couple of things that you mentioned I just wanted to comment on. Um, one was that probably board members would be interested in the pudding and ice cream party. So if you can <laughs> make sure that we get invited to that. Um, the other thing is that in terms of your goals, um, I think they're really good ones. And um, some, of your, um, some of your predecessors have had some good luck in terms of involvement with policy. And that sounds like we, what you were talking about, reviewing some policies. Um, we also have the budget process coming up. And for those who are interested in electives, it might be interesting for them to understand kind of that whole um, budget process. And it's, a, it's, an, it's a kind of a tough one to sit through. But there may be some key pieces that they might be interested in taking a look at. Um, the community services uh, initiative, that sounds great. And I think that we would all like to see um, some of that happen so the board um, if the board can be supportive in that way um, I think that we would like to be and um, uh, th those were just some comments that I had but you did it was a very sort of meaty report that you gave today so there was a lot of things thank you we have um, comments now from our middle school representatives and um, this is the first report from the middle school rep, so I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves, please. Christine Babick. Derek Bailey. Um, I was, she did the seventh and eighth grade, and I did the fifth and sixth grade, and what we were going to do was um, just talk about what's going to be happening and what, if they, what they have done so far. And the fifth and sixth grade, um, in the fifth grade, they, um, they haven't done much so far. They're just getting used to the school. And um, uh, it's just that um, they, th I think some of them are just like a little bit scared of like the upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. And um, so try, or, um, I want to try to get the, like the upperclassmen to be a little bit like friendly to them. And um, so, and in the sixth grade, um, they're going to be going to Chewonky this year, which um, Sally Foster, the, the gift rep, we had um, already that ended. And um, they, uh, the, in the sixth grade, some of the, the science classes have done, um, like they've gone to the marsh and do outdoor experiences like that. And back to the fifth grade, um, They've done some out outdoor experiences. They might be going to um, the state, um, Tulight State Park and, or um, Kettle Cove. And that's just pretty much it that they've done so far. And um, for the seventh and eighth grade, there is a dance this coming Friday from 7 to 10. Um, also, there is an informational meeting um, for the parents of seventh graders going to Kiev on um, November 2nd, and the seventh graders will be going on November 27th um, through to December 1st. Also, um, it, the eighth graders go back to Chiwanki on December 6th for a day to close down the campsites and help out the counselors there. 
There is there are family conferences the next week on Thursday the 19th and Friday the 20th. And Thursday's a half day and Friday we don't have school. Also, there is a seventh and eighth grade band and chorus concert on November 16th. And at the present time, we are sending around petitions to the seventh and eighth graders to try to initiate more frequent dances. And um, we are also initiating a proposal for an eighth grade trip to Boston, possibly. Any um, uh, questions for our representatives? Good job. The first time is always the toughest, and you did great. Thank you so much. Great job. Um, we move on to communications. Any from board members? I just have a, a very indirect uh, communication. Uh, this past weekend, my oldest son had his first weekend home from his freshman year in college. I won't bore you with a slideshow or details of the weekend, but uh, one question which I wanted to ask him and did have a chance to ask him was, uh, did Cape Elizabeth schools, it's a question that Pete and Dwight often ask kids when they see them coming back from, from college and beyond, uh, did Cape Elizabeth school system prepare you for what you came up against uh, the last few weeks? And, and the answer in, in my son's case was definitely yes, and that's a credit to, to all of you folks out there. Thank you. That's great, thanks. Um, I had just one communication, it was really a thank you, um, and I'm not specific in terms of the date, but we did have um, a workshop a couple of weeks back, um, and it was a technology workshop. I just wanted to, to extend um, a thank you to everyone who was involved. It was at the middle school. It did involve all of the schools in terms of showcasing um, the advancements that um, have been made in technology and how technology is being integrated into the curriculum. And I think it was um, just a great experience, um, a lot of energy and excitement about the, uh, the work that's being done, and certainly um, a lot of evidence uh, that the money that we're spending on technology is, is really paying dividends. So again, just a, a recognition for a, a, nice, um, a nice visit at the, at the middle school, with, again, with all of the staffs from all of the schools. Um, it, was a, uh, it was time very well spent. So thank you to everyone who's involved in in planning that. Um, the next agenda item is comments from the public. Uh, and seeing none, I'm going to move on to recognition. And this is something that, Tom, you're going to. Yeah, I, just in a preliminary manner, and these names um, probably will be coming back at the end of the year because of the wonderful product we'll have in looking at our strategic plan. But I did want to, to recognize, at least at this point, um, the leaders of the different action teams that will be heading up the whole planning, the planning process and creating those action teams. Um, and those people are John Casey um, from the middle school, Action Team 1, uh, dealing with uh, issues around professional development and supervision and evaluation of staff and looking at a lot of those human resources kinds of things and how do we um, retain quality and top flight professionals that, that we have in the district now. Another is Ingrid Stressinger from Pine Cove, who is heading up the action team that's looking at curriculum um, and all those kinds of issues about coordinating curriculum, implementing curriculum, evaluating, and revising. Um, Beth Lewis at the high school is uh, heading up an action team that's taking a look at indicators of success. Um, they'll be looking at action plans that will help us determine just how well we are doing, not only in terms of our action planning, but our own success as a school district in, in comparing us to different standards, whether they be in Maine, outside of Maine, and just so that we can have some measures that we can communicate to the public on how we're doing as a school district. Susan Dana uh, from the middle school is heading up an action team that's looking at the whole issue of climate and culture, some of the issues that the high school students I know um, are just talked about a few minutes ago, um, but looking at behaviors and, and what the expectations are in our schools and just what the climate and culture is of our schools and, and what can we do to maintain um, the kind of climate that we do want in our schools. And lastly, um, although they're not leaders, they are taking on um, the responsibility for the action team that's looking at communication. That's Sarah Berman and Ogden Williams, 
uh, from Pan Co. We'll be taking a look at the different ways we communicate um, with the public, uh, how do we communicate within our organization to each other, and looking at action plans that will be created in that area. These individuals will be spending a lot of time this year in heading these, these projects up and um, throughout the course of the year, um, I will be updating the board um, as, and I will be meeting with them as individuals and as a group uh, regarding their progress. But I would like to take it, I'd really like to thank them for what they've done so far. Okay, great. And uh, moving on to uh, the superintendent's report, uh, future direction action teams. The action teams, uh, we had an orientation session for all action team members from the faculty. Um, I'd like to let you know a little bit about that process and, and, and what we're doing as, uh, as a district and looking at the planning process. Um, we are, through this process, um, several faculty members, about 30 individuals are involved on different action teams. Um, we also will be having a formal process to get input from parent groups, uh, from the community um, on a large scale. So rather than um, one or two parents serving on action teams, this process is going to try to make an attempt anyway to, to get significant input. Um, my experience has been that one or two parents on a committee or one community member um, doesn't always give us the information we need in looking at um, what the parent perspective is on curriculum or what it is in looking at school climate and culture. <coughs> so as part of the charge, these action teams is to seek that input um, from all of the stakeholders. The um, orientation that we had went through the whole action planning process, um, what the expectations were, uh, they set up their meeting schedules, the timelines, the kinds of questions, what information they needed and what data they needed to collect. They will be meeting. Um, once more during this month, they were also are going to meet on one of the professional development days we have scheduled in November, and we'll, we'll be using other time uh, throughout the year, uh, depending on where they are in the planning process. Um, but the orientation went very well. Um, I think the teams are excited, and um, as I can tell, but I'm already getting requests for information <coughs> from different action teams, and, and they already have their schedules of when they are going to meet. The next item, um, you have in your packet requests for teachers for sabbatical leave. Um, as per the contract, by October 1st, um, teachers are to notify in writing that they are contemplating requesting a sabbatical leave for the following school year. At this point, we have three individuals. Um, the school board is to notify by November 1st whether or not those, those funds are going to be made available. The contract, as it now is, that um, we can grant up to four individuals. We have three requests. Only two of them are for full year sabbaticals. One is for a partial year. So um, this is under our, our quota of four um, and somewhat under what we had, had last year. Two of them are repeat requests um, that we were not able to fund because we were at the maximum for last year. Um, MEA results I've included in your packet. Um, the results from the most recent MEA um, at the schools, they um, are in the process of taking a look at what those results mean. Um, probably if you, it's pretty stable compared to what they were um, uh, last year. This is, this, this is that first year impl implementation of um, these particular areas, um, I don't see a lot of a lot of change, um, but these are these are indicators that we will be using when we look at that even that action team that looks at indicators. These will be one of the indicators. I think we have to be very careful not to use this as the only indicator. We've always done very well. I think as we compare our results to the surrounding communities, um, we're right where we are usually. Um, our intent is through the action planning process to use MEA results along with other results to help us uh, judge um, our progress. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Questions for Tom? Marie, are you on the sabbatical leave committee? And is it just one, is it just one board member or do we have two? 
Just one, just one, and the superintendent. Okay. And when do you you have to when do you meet and make your recommendation back to the board? We will probably meet now that the names have been presented um, prior to the board workshop because we need to have that no meet that November first deadline. So my recommendation would be that, that Marie and I meet and then make a recommendation to the board as far as the funding piece of it is, and then look at the specifics of each one of those uh, requests. Okay. Great. We're going to move on now to the uh, principal's report, and we'll start with the middle school. Nancy? Well, first, some um, good news to share with you. Um, for the fourth year in a row, we won the Physical Fitness Award for the state in our category and have been duly notified and have received um, the plaque. This is one that we've now, as I said, the fourth year. Other schools in the state win, too. We're all in different kinds of categories. And also, we won um, recognition from the American Heart Association um, as the best new school participating. And our students participated in the late winter, early spring with the Heart Association collecting pledges. And then they did it as part of their phys ed class for anyone who wanted to, um, shooting a number of baskets, jumping rope, heart healthy activities. And we were the highest um, collecting school um, as a new member to that organization. And we'll be recognized at the Mayford Conference, um, which is the conference for people in physical education, dance, and health education in November. So compliments to Aneen Burgess and Andy Strout, who really coordinated both of those efforts and all of our students who participated in that effort. Just wanted to give you a quick update of how we've been using our late start days. And as you know, our focus is on assessment. So at this time, um, the teachers have, we've really found those mornings to work very well for us. Um, it's a very productive time for the teachers. And we have worked on developing some assessments, aligning them with standards, not only Maine State learning results, but also national standards, putting them through a good task review alignment um, thing, which is really about are we asking the level of questions and are we, have we asked it in a way that will get the information we want to use um, form. Uh, we've developed some rubrics for the scoring and also have developed a student feedback mechanism this time for reporting back to the students how well they did. Interestingly enough, three of our grade levels will be doing um, an exercise involving grammar. Uh, grades five, six, and eight all chose that as a focus area to look at. And grade seven chose study skills because that's something that they work a great deal on in grade seven. Um, and they will be looking at summaries and the abilities to select the main ideas and supporting details, which coordinates very well with note taking that they do across their curriculums. So they didn't choose one curricular area, but rather a skill that they were looking for. We put them all through, and the world language team, almost forgot them here, the world language team is going to be doing an assessment with seventh graders in oral proficiency. They will be collecting their information by videotaping everyone. So that's also a new area for us to explore how manageable is that um, to get our information done in a certain number. Uh, they will be doing theirs over three days because of the videotaping aspect, and these will be in conversation, so there may be more than one student involved at a time. But we feel that all of them will be things that will inform teaching and learning. And that's the big lens that we've tried to put this through. Um, so we look forward to that. Our plans for November 20th is that, the, that by November 20th, all of these assessments will have been given. And on that day, we will score them. Um, we will run them through our feedback process for what did we learn and how did this inform our instruction. Uh, we have developed a feedback loop for that. And we will also be filling out the student reports that day. Last year, when we did this in the spring, we used some release time. This time, we won't have to worry about that because it is a professional development day for the teachers. And then on the 21st, we will be sharing all of that. The grade level teams and the world language team will be reporting out to one another, sharing our learnings, um, organizing for our next um, event to develop for assessment, which we have decided will be in content areas. So we will be doing things at different grade levels in different contents, but the, all of, a group of social studies teachers will get together and look at it five through eight. Doesn't mean there'll be a social studies test at every grade level, but they'll develop some mechanism similar to what the world language team did this time when they chose the seventh grade as a way place to um, check for oral proficiency. 
And the rest of um, the 21st, we will be working on some health issue updates, just as we felt it would be time in the afternoon to take a little bit of break from assessment from our professional development. We want, it is our major focus, but it's not the only thing we needed to cover throughout the year. With all of that good news and feeling really good about where we are with our own local assessment, I just want to share with you very briefly a struggle we are having with our degrees of reading power test. This is a standardized test that we give all of our students in the middle school. Within the first few days of school, I believe we gave it, oh, December, not December, how about September 5th or 6th or something like that this year. We try to give it early so that we can have the information back. Um, we can mail it to parents and then we can discuss it in further detail at our family conferences which are coming up. It has been a good assessment for us. We felt it has informed our instruction. It has told us things about students' um, independent reading level, their instructional reading level, where they might be frustrated. It's been able, we've been able to share information about books that people might like to buy their children for presents for holiday season or whatever, or places to go in the library. Um, it's helped us redesign some questioning that we use when we teach comprehension. Our struggle has been, um, as late as today, when I was talking with their head, of assessment reporting. Uh, we're having difficulty getting the correct local percentiles. They are now sending us the fourth batch of materials. Um, none of these have matched um, the information about the national percentiles and those reading levels I just went over remains the same, but the local percentiles have varied each time. And they have called us and said there's been a mistake. Uh, right after we mailed them in, there was, there was information that they had used new norming trends. That happens when you use standardized tests sometimes. That was not a big glitch. Um, then we got, so the first reports we got needed to be corrected for the norming trends. Then we began to have trouble with the local percentiles were not computed correctly. Um, last Friday we got a batch, um, our third batch from them, and unfortunately the local percentiles that were listed to go on the permanent records did not match the local percentiles that were listed on the alphabetic order list. I did talk with them today and they are sending us the new material. At this point in time, I, I'm not sharing this with you to tell all our woes, but just unfortunately unfor for us, it's been a standardized test that we've believed in. When you come to a situation like this, as I was explaining them today, you can have trouble with one section, a local percentile, but now that they've had trouble with it four times in a row in a relatively short time with us, it makes us wonder that even though the others have been reliable, they've stayed steady, are they valid? because you can be reliable without being valid, and in testing you want those two things. Um, so we've had some good conversations. We're hoping it will still work for us. Um, however, also say this because for some of the parents, you're gonna be getting those letters a little bit later than we would usually like to have them come out. The parent letters, um, there's been a little glitch there. The local percentiles aren't on them, but we usually share those local percentiles in conferences. Um, we're hoping to have all of that and have the right information to share with people next week. But just to let people know, if for some reason we're not, we're not trying to hide anything, we just want to share the correct information with families and not the incorrect information. So we're doing our best to get that um, on board. This also, I relate it to the other one in that for some time, some people question if local school systems can really develop reliable and valid assessment systems. And just to show that sometimes even the standardized people have difficulty with that. And it's not that our local ones will be perfect, but I think we will work on them, we will refine them, they will be interesting to look at, and they will inform teaching and learning for us. As um, Derek and Christine shared, we have progress reports coming out on Friday. We're also having a dance, so we like to celebrate those two things together. Um, parents in the seventh grade will be getting more information about Kiev as it gets closer time to do that. We do have a social coming up for the fifth and sixth grade, and that first social, the time is a little different than we've had in the past. It's from five to seven, and we will vary those throughout the year to coordinate our use of the pool with the community's use of the pool at the high school. And the other thing, just to make sure everybody understands our concerts this year, we have had concerts in December in the past, and some people have been confused by those because they thought they would be connected to more of a holiday theme, and our concerts aren't actually connected to a holiday. Uh, we do one in the fall, we try to do one in the fall and one in the spring. So we are doing the fifth, grade, fifth and sixth grade chorus, sixth grade band, and seventh grade jazz group will come on November 15th followed by November 16th with the 7th and 8th grade chorus, 7th and 8th grade band, and the 8th grade jazz group. Um, so they are a little bit earlier, they're just before the Thanksgiving break this year, rather than in December at some point in time. 
I think that covers our information for this month, unless you have any questions. Questions or comments for Nancy? Kevin. Um, Kevin. And not that I'm expecting answers, but um, on the standardized testing that uh, we're having all these glitches with, how much do they charge us? How much time, administrative time, and staff time has been spent uncovering their glitches? And have we paid for the tests yet? I believe <coughs> again, the I'm answer to is, and, and that's where you may see it in a budget item. And one of the things we need to take all that information, Kevin, and determine whether this is something that will work for us. It appears that we sent our, our results in separately from the elementary school, and from the early reports we've gotten, it doesn't appear the elementary school is having the same problem. So if it turns out that it's just a slight problem with our local percentiles, that's one issue. If it's an issue bigger than that, that's time for us to reconsider um, because of all of those things you just pointed out. My first thing was considering whether we should bother to pay for the tests that have already been administered. We keep waiting for some kind of a, a deal. I think we have paid them. We have to pay them when we purchase the test. We have to send the purchase order. So um, they have been uh, very kind. Kim Sturgeon, our new guidance counselor and coordinator for the DRP, she doesn't coordinate all of our tests, but she does the DRPs, has been doing an outstanding job as she's learned this and has learned and talked with them. But today it was time for me to speak with the company and, and to move it forward. So we'll continue to work on that with the school system's best interest at mind. It's particularly helpful to get updates in terms of the, um, the release time also and, and how that's being used. So thank you for um, going through that. Um, Pan Cove, Tom. Good evening. Uh, Nancy's already mentioned the uh, late start. Um, since we weren't dealing with the fire extinguishers at Pond Cove, Tom covered for that. They've been great. There's been universal enthusiasm for it uh, among the Pond Cove staff. I think the block of time itself has, has just worked out as a very useful time for us. The context for our inquiry this year was uh, literacy. We're studying how we, how we teach reading and writing. Each team had a plan, and uh, the intergrade talk has come out of these 90-minute meetings, too. So it's been terrific. And I also suspect that the teachers are morning people, and they really like it. I also want to thank the parents, too, for, being, for adapting their schedules to it, because it's, uh, it's been a worthwhile experiment, and so far, so good. Nancy also mentioned assessments. We, we got our MBAs back a couple of weeks ago. We haven't analyzed all of them yet, but at first glance, and Tom mentioned, too, we have uh, a few more students at Pond Cove meeting the standards. It's not a lot, but at least it's headed in the right direction. But it's hard to tell. It's only the second year we've done the revised MEA. And I think the real, uh, the really good way to look at it would be to see how the fourth graders do in grade eight, and then again, how they do in, in grade 11. But the, um, it's up, and that's good. I'd also, I wrote to parents a couple of weeks ago, we get feedback from the kids. The kids are asked questions about their study habits and what they think of this, that, and the other thing. And there's a clear correlation between the amount of TV time and how kids do in the MEA. The more TV you watch, the less likely you are to get a high score in the MEA. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had the trouble the middle schools have with DRP, um, and probably because we did it a little later and uh, a week or two later, and they were all ready to do those uh, new norms, so uh, we're there. It's a little hard to deal with because it's a, it's a small company, and when the data does come back, it's 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 done in a kind of black and white, uh, not easy to understand way. So we'll be spending more time with it next week at, at team meetings. The other um, assessment we're doing this week, we've been doing it for the past few years, that each team has time to read and score samples of student, student writing in grades two, three, and four. And that's a prompted discussion about what good writing looks like, not just along the way, uh, like with, as we do with the MBAs, but what it, look, what it looks like in each grade level. Each team has done that, and out of each team meeting comes the need to talk to the other grades, which I think is, is just right. Um, onward to something else. The Science Committee is diligently still meeting, and one of the goals of the Science Committee this year is to increase not just communication, but contact among the buildings. And thanks to the Science Department at the high school, um, and particularly Doug Worthley, we had 16 or 18 high school students <coughs> come to Pond Cove last week and help out 
would happen to be uh, with a third grade assessment that really has to be done with real stuff and with, with some uh, older student guidance and it, worked, and it worked out extremely well. So somebody must have figured out the schedule over there. Of the 16 or 18 kids who came over, I don't think, like 15 of them were not really Doug's students. So he's mastered that schedule and he's come over on his own time and the kids have volunteered their own time. I'm really impressed with that. Also, Beth Lewis, who did an Earth Watch um, activity this summer, was making arrangements today to, and again on her time, to visit the middle school to talk about volcanoes in Hawaii and to come to the Pond Cove and talk about geology and ecosystems in general. I think that's a great project. And speaking of great projects, last spring when the, science com the uh, Climate Committee was concluding its year's work, we casually mentioned the idea of a student newspaper and a few people thought that would be a good idea. And somehow, lo and behold, over the summer, I don't know if you've seen it, Pond Cove has a student newspaper thanks to a group of, of parents. The only thing it's missing now is, uh, is a name. And another parent, Audrey Castro, has put up mailboxes around the school so that kids can suggest names for the paper. I just think they deserve a lot of credit. It was uh, PCPA people, neighborhood parents, and kids who got this out. And the day it came out, there was just a tremendous amount of enthusiasm to keep it going. So they deserve a lot of credit for that. Any questions? Please don't mention the Red Sox. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marie. I, I just have a comment on, um, in one of your newsletters home to the parents on October 5th, you um, wrote up um, the early release day, which I thought was fabulous for parents to get the information on, you know, what everyone's doing in the schools. And I don't know if we're doing it in the middle school or the high school, um, but I think this is a great way to communicate to the community and to the parents. Thanks. It was great. Yeah, I think at all the levels, we're really making an effort, and I, the middle school and the high school have, have done similar kinds of things in getting that word out to how we're using that, that time because it really has been a plus for, for us as a district. Elaine? Um, I had a question for Tom. I think that newspaper is a great product that came about from the parents that were involved. And, um, the Climate Committee's uh, work last year. And my question is, um, regarding the Climate Committee this year, do they have any specific goals for this upcoming year? And are they working with some of the feedback that came back from the survey that you had sent out? To we, we did. Uh, we had so many goals and activities that, that the group decided this would be the year to put those things in action. And uh, we, we've looked at some of the general comments, and I can't think of one right now, about the, that we got back from the survey. So this is the year to put things in effect that we started last year. So uh, we won't be meeting quite as often, but we hope that these uh, action plans will go forward. If, for example, I do remember uh, one of the concerns on, on the parent survey and from the kids and the teachers was the playground. And it just so happens we have a playground committee going and there'll be a PCPA meeting about uh, about the playground next month. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Thank you, Tom. Sure. And uh, the high school. Peter. We've uh, already found our hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> the foolish Dawsoni. Uh, is going to be here. He'll be presenting actually working with the board uh, <laughs> at budget time just, just before we present our request for new electives. Uh, we, I, knew it was, I knew it was connected somewhere. <laughs> We're getting sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time starts now. Um, Quickly upcoming uh, events, uh, it seems like there are several things coming up in the uh, high school in the next couple of weeks. We will be mailing out progress reports this week. Uh, we've hit that midpoint of the first quarter. Um, so parents can expect to be uh, receiving progress reports uh, probably Thursday, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, could possibly be uh, Wednesday, but I'm guessing Thursday. And in the high school, important to remember that um, uh, while many teachers do send out, especially first quarter, uh, broad range of progress reports, we really 
emphasize that the progress report should definitely go to anyone who uh, is not performing up to potential or who is in danger of failing. The PSAT, the Pre Preliminary Scholastic Aptitude Test, will be given in school on Tuesday. Uh, if you remember last year, we made a switch in the high school uh, testing program. Uh, we used to use the comprehensive testing program for ninth and 10th graders at the same time that uh, the 11th grade students were taking the MEAs and we gradually realized that um, the, the, the data that we were getting from that was um, so constant uh, that we didn't feel that we needed to be doing it every year. We may still look at uh, oh, every third, fourth, fifth year, doing it again just to make sure, but the, uh, the data was always very con uh, constant and very positive, uh, and we felt that in, uh, given in comparison to the time that we were spending on it, where virtually we were stopping, we were shutting down the school for educational purposes uh, for oh, approximately five days a, a year for the various tests, um, we felt that we would do away with that, but what we did want to do was move the preliminary scholastic aptitude test from a Saturday test date to the Tuesday test date in order to encourage as many sophomores and juniors to take the test as possible. Juniors were traditionally taking it at a very, uh, very high rate, but um, we wanted more sophomores to be taking it because it is good practice for probably the, the most important test that our students take, which is the SAT. So we will have um, uh, in the neighborhood of, of uh, 200, 220, uh, students taking the PSAT this coming uh, Tuesday. The rest of the classes will be going on as normal. In the past, we used to tell the seniors not to come to school until 10.30, have the juniors and sophomores uh, involved in uh, testing for well, an hour and a half a day for uh, those times. So I think we've come up with a, a good solution to the testing time issue. Uh, October 19th and 20th will be the parent conferences, and I'd like to remind any of the parents that are listening that they can uh, make their appointments for the conferences by simply calling the high school main office, 799-3309, um, during the workday, and we have people there uh, ready to help uh, uh, make those appointments. And, and so far, it seems like it's working out quite well. People are finding that they can make conferences at times that work for them without having large gaps in between uh, conferences. And uh, finally, a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, those conferences go from noon until 8 on Thursday the 19th and 7.30 until 11 on Friday morning the 19th, uh, the 20th. The, uh, while not a, directly a school event, I do want to remind people that are listening that the Cape Coalition will be sponsoring an evening of information uh, on the 19th, uh, a, a week from this Thursday, uh, at 5.30 here at the Town Hall. 5.30 is when uh, pizza is served. And Frank Lyons uh, will be presenting information regarding uh, the legal aspects of underage uh, parties, underage drinking and underage parties. Uh, so I would encourage uh, parents and students uh, who are listening to uh, attend that evening. I think each of the board members received in their packet the new uh, and improved research guidelines. Uh, that is the result of a, of a great deal of work by the committee that is uh, listed on the uh, cover page from both last spring and this summer. Uh, they've been working on that. One of the uh, major substantive changes, there's, there are some changes in style that I think will be important. One is that it's now a notebook format uh, with a three-hole punch that can be kept very easily, whereas uh, prior to this we had a more of a um, paperback book size, uh, which wasn't as, as readily uh, available to students. But substantive changes include a great deal of expansion in the area of uh, internet research, uh, uh, proper citation, and uh, more guidelines about um, uh, how to use the, you know, the vast resources of the internet in a way that um, helps to ensure um, uh, heft rather than just uh, number, sheer numbers of information. The, the, we, we find that uh, students are uh, often tempted to use websites um, with very little recognition of what the biases of that particular uh, author may be, the uh, expertise of that particular writer, and so forth. So they're trying to give some guidelines there, too. Uh, 
finishing up, uh, we uh, also would like to add uh, our appreciation and enthusiasm for the uh, early release, um, the uh, late arrival days that we've had thus far. There, thus far, uh, would want to mention again to all those parents uh, listening that November 7th, Election Day, uh, Tuesday, um, the high school will have a uh, another late arrival day. The high school alone will be having that particular one. And it's uh, obviously part of it is an attempt to have uh, that much more in-service time, but it's also an attempt to recognize that um, with the one-town concept, the school is used, the high school is used as the polling place, and uh, we do believe that Tuesday morning, given that this is a national election, Tuesday morning early will be a very busy time, uh, so this is a way of trying to work with the town to uh, make sure that the uh, traffic can flow easily uh, at a major uh, election time at the same time uh, keeping uh, close to a full day of, of school. We have been uh, also using our time uh, centered on the theme of assessment, but in the same way that Dr. Frisella has um, uh, given us the uh, recognition that each school may need to pursue this in slightly different ways, what I'm finding is each department in the high school is having different needs. And so we have a full range of assessment related uh, studies going on. We have uh, departments uh, that are uh, taking a look at the recently received uh, MEA results and the released items and how students performed on those to uh, look to see whether they are assessing similar uh, items, especially those uh, where, students where, where students had more difficulty. Um, development of common assessments for subjects that are taught uh, by several different subjects and levels that are taught by several different teachers. Uh, benchmark assessments that we've mentioned in the past for particular, for example, the end of Algebra 2 or Advanced Algebra. Uh, so all of those are, are different approaches that uh, different departments are taking. Uh, the, the one universal is that they are very enthusiastic about that time. The uh, question has arisen as to whether the early release time will be uh, quite as effective. Uh, they're, they're, they're finding in the high school that they really love that early morning time when everyone is still um, really fresh. Um, and when high school students don't tend to be really fresh, and so they're finding that uh, that, that can be a, a very very effective use of time. And we're eager to see if the uh, late, uh, the early release uh, time has that same impact, but I think it will. It's, it's time um, well spent, I think. That's it. On the um, late start on election day, is that a 90 minute late start? Yes, that will be the, the, the late start on, a good point. The late start on election day will be a 90 minute late start, the same as the others. So the high school buses will be running uh, 90 minutes uh, uh, off of their normal schedule. I just have a question. This research paper guideline um, book, is this given to every high school student? From yes. Yep. This is great. There's lots it's of given great to every high school student, and one of the things that uh, was uh, done this year to to make sure that there was a good deal of communication is um, that um, uh, a middle school uh, teacher was involved also uh, in that uh, development. So uh, the middle school teachers all receive the guide. Each middle school teacher receives the guidelines, and every high school student. That's great. Mm -hmm. Comments or questions? Thank you very much. We're going to move on to committee reports, and we'll start with um, the Finance Subcommittee, which met to, uh, this evening. Kevin? Finance Committee met tonight at 6.30. Um, the highlight of tonight's meeting was a report from Ernie McVean, who is responsible for all maintenance at all school and town buildings. Uh, who gave us an update on the facilities. Uh, he gave us quite a bit of information, all very heartening. Uh, one item I would uh, highlight as typical would be the installation of a control system for the boilers in the high school that saved 23,000 gallons of fuel last year. So um, that, that was significant, and then because of the increase in fuel prices, that, uh, that installation paid for itself in one year and uh, is certainly going to help us balance our fuel expense in the coming year. 
Uh, there's certainly a lot of other things, ADA compliance work, renovation of classrooms, uh, uh, upgrades of the stages and sound systems, auditoriums, gyms, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, certainly a great deal of work. Our capital improvement money is being well spent to keep our buildings maintained. I'd like to uh, take the opportunity to express my thanks to Ernie and his crew for their excellent work and also the credibility they bring to uh, the job, uh, as George mentioned during the meeting. That was, that was the highlight of the evening. Uh, we have a preliminary cost estimate on uh, total tuition for next year for Portland Arts and Technology High School, which will be roughly $76,000. Um, uh, we reviewed the annual financial report. Um, we're anticipating a fund balance of $286,000, which is down substantially from the prior year. Um, other than that, uh, a review, we reviewed the appropriation reports, uh, nothing substantial there, and we received a preliminary report from Tom on uh, some facility issues. Uh, and that's it. We will meet again, uh, same time, same place, next month. Thank you, Kevin. Um, uh, update from the policy subcommittee, Jennifer. We met this past uh, Wednesday, October 4th, and reviewed um, the policies that we will later discuss under first reading. Okay. And we meet again, let's see, the Wednesday before our next meeting. November 1st. So November 1st at noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay, thank you. And uh, Marie Facilities uh, Committee update? Um, yes, last month we had our first um, facilities committee meeting with the SMRT people and basically talked about, you know, concerns for facilities, just reaffirming everything that we have been talking about for the past few months. Um, tomorrow night is our next meeting with SMRT and basically we'll be going over some of their preliminary findings and um, with, which is specifically on school population over the next 10 years. So that's basically where we are. Um, in terms of the planning committee, um, we are looking at getting together with the people that are on this committee within the next month or so um, to kind of have a general brainstorming session of what our expectations will be for um, the budget session. So that's where we are with that also. Good. And that um, meeting is in the Jordan Conference Room tomorrow at 7? Yes. Tomorrow night at 7. Tomorrow night at 7. All right. Okay. Um, thank you. Unfinished business. I don't believe that we haven't. Oh, sorry. Can I go back and ask Pete a question? Yeah. Okay. That's unfinished business. <laughs> That's unfinished business. Um, I've been meaning to ask you, what's the status on the trip to Italy? I asked uh, Ms. Murphy the other day if she would uh, be ready by the November meeting. Uh, to give a report on, on where we stand, and she felt that uh, she would be, so I will be asking uh, Mary to put that on the agenda for the November meeting. They have uh, been having interest meetings, and uh, I think they're at a point where they have the number of students uh, that uh, are necessary to have the uh, two chaperones and so forth. I think it's a go. Uh, we'd like to get a few more so that if some guys have to back rounds. out, no, <laughs> or, <laughs> not short there. Uh, with a few more bad. students, uh, so that we uh, are sure that even if somebody has to out at the last minute, that we still have uh, enough to go. But she will, have, uh, Ms. Murphy, will have a report uh, next uh, next board meeting. And how has she been advertising the program at at school? Uh, so it's been on the daily and now it was on the daily announcements for uh, oh, a week and a half before she had had meetings last spring. Uh, preliminary meetings and then uh, had st some of those students going around. She's had notices on the whiteboards and, and then uh, the daily uh, announcements have been filled with uh, with them, so. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, I'm gonna move on now to new business. And uh, the first item there is the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for the fall. Um, my first question is, did I know it was a late addition to your packet, but did everyone receive the no, certain list? I don't think that, did, did others receive it, it already? I gave the 
I gave them to Tom to distribute. Oh, okay. So they're coming to you now. We knew that we were going to get them. Yes. You have in front of you, and I'll, um, I can go th through the names, and uh, these are different uh, athletic fee positions. And I'd like to start first with the, with the middle school for recommendation. Um, seventh grade girl basketball, Matt Whaley, eighth grade. Boys basketball, John Casey. And seventh grade boys basketball, Chris Turner. At the high school, uh, Jim Ray, varsity, varsity boys basketball. Ray McQuinney, JV, varsity basketball. Creed Ray, freshman boys basketball. Frank Marston, varsity girls basketball. Tammy Loring, JV girls basketball. Doug Ridley, head coach indoor track. Kerry Curtis, varsity swimming. Ben Raymond, assistant swimming. Paul Athorn, diving. Steve Ouellette, ice hockey. Kurt Brown, assistant ice hockey. Fern Cloutier, assistant ice hockey. And Joan and Ann Upton, high school Nordic skiing. Um, and a note that John and Ann are volunteering their services. Um, although the, some of you remember the um, athletic fee committee had recommended a fee for that, but they had declined that, that fee. And, and, and they're presently looking for um, an assistant coach who would then maybe take over the program in the future. We also have um, a winter coach. Uh, Kim Rovzar, eighth grade girls basketball. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Jim? I move that we approve the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for fall 2000. Thank you. Um, second? Jennifer? Thanks. Um, questions or comments on these nominations? Certainly, um, the recognition for the great work that John and Ann Upton do. Um, and they uh, volunteer their services. This will be the sixth, sixth year. They do a great job, and we're very fortunate um, to have them as, as coaches for that team, and we certainly appreciate their, their effort. Um, seeing no other comments or questions, all those in favor? And that's 7-0. We'll move on now to uh, nominations for co-curricular fee positions. We do have a few co-curricular um, at the high school. Um, the recommendations are for Norm Richardson, Jazz Band 1, Anthony Morrow, Jazz Band 2, Ralph Norris, Jazz, jazz Combo 1, and Mark Pendarvis as a freshman class advisor. Also at Pond Cove, in the drama position, uh, Marianne De Pasquale. Okay. Do we need a motion? Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for co curricular fee positions. Thank you. Um, second? Um, Elaine, thank you. Comments or questions about these nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We'll move now on to uh, Jennifer, the uh, policies for first reading. And these are all in your packet. Right. Um, we have a number of policies um, for first reading. Um, there are, uh, there's the enrollment of non-resident employees' children. Uh, that one, uh, there are two shorter ones and then um, a lot of uh, special ed ones. Um, enrollment of non-resident employees' children. A goal of the Cape Elizabeth School District is to attract and retain quality staff. For that reason, as an extension of our employee benefits, persons who are actively employed on a full-time basis by the Cape Elizabeth School Department may have their children enrolled without paying tuition, provided the administrative conditions established for all non-resident students have been met and affirmed by the superintendent. Staff requests for tuition waivers must be made by March 1st of the prior academic year. In all cases, the superintendent has the ability to review special circumstances. Should I do all of these and then um, add, or do them one at a time? Why don't we, why don't we uh, take these one at a time? And, and then when you move into this um, special ed um, policies, we may want to just kind of review the topics and see if anyone has any questions or comments. Um, any any uh, comments or questions on this particular one? Um, the only thing that came to mind, um, Jen, was 
we are saying that it's an extension of our employee benefits, and I believe that that's the, the principle that, um, or the value that makes this uh, um, the right thing for us to be doing. I just wonder whether or not we should say that it, it's, um, it's a non-negotiable employee benefit. And I don't, I, it's just a question. Um, and maybe it's more just figuring out whether or not we need to say that. Um, it's, I, I think it's something that, um, you know, we certainly would like to, from my perspective, I think that I would like to see it put in place and I'd like to see it stay in place. But I think that it's one of those things that, um, since, it is, since we are saying it's a new benefit, I think we need to sort of categorize what kind of benefit it is. Okay, either that or we could take that whole phrase out and just start with persons. Well, I think that one of the, one of the one reasons is, okay. is that we want, you know, we, we believe that ownership, um, which, which would be, you know, um, ownership sort of constituted by, um, by uh, staff having their own children in the school system will, will, um, will sort of add to the quality of our whole, whole overall effort. So I think that it is important. I'm just wondering whether or not. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying we could take that whole phrase out and just start the sentence with persons if you didn't want to get into a benefit. Oh, I see kind what you're saying. Language. Yeah. Well, just something to so, think about. Kevin, so you words yeah, I would just, uh, you know, I would have said strike the word benefits because it always, when I think benefits, I think of a contract item. And we certainly don't want this to be in a contract, although I do support it. And, uh, I can only think of one circumstance where uh, where it would be an issue, and that's the size thing that we're examining right now, the, the space requirements. Right. Right. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I, so and I, I do support this. We could strike that whole first right. thing and just put therefore, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, so sure. Is that yeah. more to, okay. Yeah, actually, I, I think I was the one who said to put it in in the first place. Right. The well, employee benefits nice. piece, but yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've read it, I don't like it. No, it's fine. I, I, okay. th th that change is good. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments on this one? Well, Kevin brings up a good point, though. What about uh, any space issues in the future, and, and do we need to address that now in the policy up front? Well, we did discuss that, okay. um, and... That was brought up, and, and originally we had that as part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Um, we talked about, and what I think George and several other members brought up about what is the intent of this, and uh, quite a few references <coughs> to one of our strategic goals in looking at attracting and retaining quality staff. Um, and, and in the surveys that, that have been sent out and looking at what the impact of this would be, um, you know, on a surface and from when it was in before, um, doesn't really have much of an impact on any particular class because there might be three kids that would be in a particular grade level. Um, so that that isn't the issue, but I do think, you know, looking at enrollments and where we are going in the future, where we're very fortunate we don't have a district that is growing by, by leaps and bounds. So we don't need to address it, it sounds like. Well, oh. we sort of thought that um, if you uh, limited it to so many kids per grade, then you're mm -hmm. punishing somebody who happens to have a kid who was born in that particular year. Um, we did, Tom and I sort of put in this uh, request by March 1st in the off chance there really were some budget implications. Mm -hmm. So at least we would know it's coming. Um, at least we'd know ahead of time rather than September. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but from his, from past experience and from his survey, it didn't appear that it would impact right. um, budget-wise. The other piece was that we said if it's based on a principle and a belief that this is the right thing to do, then we, we do have to be prepared that if it has potential costs to it, that we're presuming that the costs, um, that the benefits outweigh the costs. Okay, great. Yeah, um, I, I examined this over the weekend and spoke with Tom earlier today, and I don't see this as having a substantial impact on cost. Overhead is overhead, and it was simply, you know, if we added students, we'd be amortizing the overhead over more, a greater number of students, and they have, thereby reducing the cost <coughs> per student. Again, my only concern is space. Um, 
you know, we are studying space issues right now. We don't have the answers yet, although we have some preliminary thoughts as to what's going to be happening over the, over the next 10 years. My only concern is this particular policy was withdrawn at some point in the past, mm -hmm. and we grandfathered students. And effectively, we created two classes of employees, employees who had students in the system and employees who couldn't have students in the system. I don't want to put this policy in place and then wind up with egg in our face a year from now having to withdraw it and then creating a two-class employee again uh, with those who were admitted under the policy, um, you know, having the benefit, for lack of a better phrase, and those people coming later on. I, I, I firmly believe that this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm convinced that it's not going to have a cost, ben cost impact. But, you know, in terms of space, um, that's, again, it's my only concern because, you know, if it turns out we didn't have enough room for our own students, you know, who live in the district, uh, we're going to wind up with a going on face. And we're going to wind up punishing the people that we're trying to help right now. Uh, Tom did some research into the numbers that we had um, before this policy was um, repealed or deleted. Um, and I think you had 19 over The year before, grade, the year it ended, there were 19, 19 students, no more than three at any one grade level. Um, in the response to the interest survey, um, the numbers were very similar mm -hmm. uh, as to right before it ended. So 19 over 13 grades is not um, even really a space issue, I wouldn't think. Unless all 19 were in one particular grade, which is... Right, unlikely. <laughs> How long has it been since we've had this policy? I, we, I mean, um, when was it taken away? I think we figured out it was like five years back. Is so that right? more than that. Um, it was... Six, probably six, six or seven yeah, years. Yeah. I think it was 1993, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. 93? I believe. Yeah. The old policy right, was, night, was repealed in 19, I think it was 93 or 94. Yeah. Okay. okay, shall we move on to the next one? Okay. Student support teams. Oh, or I, is that the order yeah, that you wanted to go in? Student support teams, um, I'll just read the introductory paragraph. As a concerned group of school personnel, student support teams are dedicated to helping students and parents find assistance for dealing with problems which interfere with learning and or a healthy, productive lifestyle. The teams assist through individual assessment, plan development, referral, and coordination of services. Uh, following that is a definition of a student support team and then a brief paragraph on regulations which define the different student support teams in each school. Are uh, there comments or input um, for Jennifer on this policy? Uh, I, how, how much wordsmithing do we do here or do we? I mean, this, is, this is the time the that time if you place? feel that it should be wordsmithed, uh, because the next time it's going to come in front of you is actually for a second reading, which is for approval. Okay. Um, my concern was uh, at-risk behaviors. Depression is probably not an at-risk behavior. It's probably not. It's not. Depression is not a behavior. So for whatever, that somehow needs to be revisited. Be behavior, would it? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And um, uh -huh. again, suicidal tendencies. I wondered about that as behaviors. So you'd prefer to just strike that right out? Strike it out or change it in, in some way? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, as pretty new to it, I, I think there's a value in identifying some of the emotional issues, mm -hmm. um, depression being a serious one. I guess I just would feel better if we could define, just say, well, you, do know, I, do you say like emotional that? issues? Or Again, those aren't behaviors. A a how about at risk behavior? Uh, and other conditions include? Um, 
and other, and other conditions? Well, the pri previous paragraph says at risk behaviors, so we'd have to. Um, I mean, we can play around with this, not here necessarily. Th and that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, if you think in terms of depression, um, I think the at risk behavior is the result of the condition. So, right. I, but I, I think that that word is broad enough to encompass a lot of different issues and needs to be in there somewhere. Um, you know, although technically it's not an at risk behavior and some of the other things might not be the actual behavior, but perhaps the cause of the behavior. Um, okay. But I think it's appropriate to be in there somewhere. I think there's value in listing them and identifying them. I just think specifically maybe put them in behaviors and other, other things that we're looking for. If there's, um, if you, if you have some suggested um, rewriting, I would suggest that you get that to Jennifer. That's probably the most helpful thing that we can do. Um. Okay. Now we'll move on to special education um, policies. Um, first, we have a number of uh, policies that have been reviewed by council and um, have been recommended to be deleted from our policy manuals. Those are um, everybody. Yeah. IHBAE, which is procedure on parent involvement, IHBAD, Procedure on Personnel Development, ICB, Extended School Year Services, IHBGB, Exceptional Students, Homeschooled or Privately Educated. And what we'll do is um, we'll give people an opportunity to review those, and at the same time we do the second readings, we'll um, do a vote to delete these. Okay. Are there any questions now that people have about them um, based on their first reading of them? Okay. Um, and then the first reading um, of new special ed policies, these were developed because of new special ed um, guidelines and regulations. Again, they've been reviewed by council. Um, and I'm just going, they're quite lengthy, so I'll just read the titles. titles. Do you, you want the coding to? It doesn't, it's, it doesn't mean anything to anybody. Um, child find policy, independent educational evaluations, policy on disciplinary removal of students with disabilities, um, and the guideline that goes along with that. Um, referral and pre-referral and the procedures and correspond with that. Policy on programming in the least restrictive environment and the procedures and regulations that follow that. And I think one is we should have student educational records policy. Right. And I don't seem to have that. I just Procedures for student educational records policy. Right. But Six. that should follow student educational records policy, which is behind it. Behind it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then notification of rights under FERPA. And individual educational plan. And now we know how Clara spent her summer reading <laughs> time. Oh no, Tom and I worked on it. <laughs> um, these are all revisions? Yes. Claire? Yes, they um, on t In addition to your, your work on these, uh, have they been re reviewed by council? I think I heard Jen say that. Right. Yes, they have. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so these will all come up for a second reading next month. If you have any questions on these as you review them, let me give you an opportunity now. Anybody have any questions on them now based on your preliminary 
review. Um, then what we will do is move on to, uh, are we all set, Jennifer, to move yeah. on? Mm -hmm. yep. um, we'll move on to consideration of a request from a, from a teacher for an extended leave. And uh, Tom, before you do this, um, this is something that we will vote on this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you have in front of you a request um, from a teacher at the high school for an extended leave. Um, I'm recommending approval of that leave, and I would like to give a, an explanation as to why I think this is something that we should approve. It is, it is for eight days that does extend um, a vacation period. But in discussing this with the teacher and looking at, and, and thinking about the discussion we had last year um, around uh, professional development, around sabbatical leaves, and trying to look at how we can do some of these things and not necessarily do, do all of these kinds of activities take a year. Um, there might be times when a teacher um, can do something that's very worthwhile, not only for their own professional development, but that would benefit the students in the classroom um, in a shorter period of time. I think this is an example, as you read the letter, of how the students in these classes are, are going to benefit, um, and the teacher also, personally, but I think it, it really will add a lot to the classroom and, and not take uh, an, awful, an awfully long time to do that professionally, I, though I think it's a, it's a very, uh, very good project for this teacher to be involved in in an eight-day period of time. And she will be using, obviously, her, some of her vacation time to continue with this project. So it's not only the eight days that she'll be giving to, the, to this project, but the time she'll be using uh, during her vacation time to also uh, work on this project. Okay. Um, is, there a, um, is there a motion in terms of this uh, request for an extended leave? Kevin. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for an, ex uh, for an eight day sabbatical for uh, this teacher. Sonia Medina. Sonia Medina, right. Um, a second? Is that the wording? I would, yeah, I would think yeah. it, would be, it would be an, an extended leave. Um, we might eventually want to get into looking at it as a shorter kind of a sabbatical as we, as we discuss this further, but in this particular case, this is probably more considered an extended leave. An extended educational leave? Right, professional leave. I, have, professional leave. I withdraw the motion and uh, I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation for an extended leave for Sonia Medina. Okay. Um, second, Jim, thank you. Uh, question, questions or comments about what you have in front of you? I think it sounds great. What? Sounds great. Sounds great. I'd like to and see it. What are the costs? Is it just getting a sub to fill in for the, that's what it is, and where does that come from? Does that? The substitute. substitute right account. out of that. Be a sub for those eight days. Right, okay. Sounds great. Other questions or comments? Do we get to see it? Get to see the videotapes? Yeah, I think it would be great. Yeah. I'm sure you could see those. I think it might be good to get that feedback, you know, as we're as we're looking at this and as these things unfold. This might be a good example of, you know, what what did happen in those eight days. Right. Mm. Of course, we won't understand it. <laughs> That's right. It'll be it's going to translate. That's okay. You wanted to go to Italy, and you know. Well, I'm working yeah. on it. Of course. Uh, okay. Where are we now? I think we're voting on this. Yeah. All those in favor. 7-0. And uh, before we adjourn for this evening, um, I'd just like to review the dates to remember. Uh, there is a facilities uh, committee meeting, as Marie had said, uh, October 11th, that's tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. in the w William Jordan Conference Room. Um, the school board workshop meeting um, will be the fourth Tuesday of October, the 24th, and that will be 7 p.m. at the high school library. Um, the, the specific topic is um, yet to be determined. Um, the finance subcommittee meeting um, will precede the regular school board meeting on November 14th, the subcommittee meeting for finance at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room, the regular board meeting here in the, cham uh, in the chambers, and the policy subcommittee meeting uh, will be Wednesday, November 1st at noontime in the Jordan Conference Room. With those dates covered, um, that concludes our business for this evening, and we will uh, conclude our meeting. Thank you very much.